with TN2000 here back with another video. In this video, we will be, I will be doing my cast assessment for Survivor Winners at War. Now, these are my opinions, so um, I might be wrong, I might be right, who knows. This is just what I think of the cast. Um, make sure that you, this is only part one, so make sure you uh, turn notifications on for my channel so you get notified when part two comes out and yeah let's get into it so first on our list we have natalie anderson the last time natalie competed on survivor was in survivor season 29 san juan del sur which went with the blood first water format and her partner was her twin nadia and Nadia got voted out first, but Natalie used that as a fuel to get to the end and win. She's a very strong competitor and can do very well in comps. Um, in her own words, she gets along with the guys because she's one of the guys, and she can use that to ad her advantage very well by using her social game to pretty much get by the whole game and maybe even win. I see her possibly winning because her threat level isn't too high, but it's still up there to people know she is there. But the only thing I see getting in her way is that the huge threats make an alliance, and she will be the biggest threat that's not in that huge alliance. So that alliance could target her, and she could be out very early. But I think if she gets to the merge, she has a very strong chance at winning this game. And I wouldn't put it past her and to win because she is a good competitor and probably one of the best chances of winning. Next up, we have Tyson Apostle. He played on token teams, Heroes vs. Villains, and Blood vs. Water, which was his winning season. He is a strong competitor and does very well in comps, which could put a target on his back. But there's other people who are also that big of threats. In his ET Canada interview, he talked a lot about how pregame stuff definitely will come into play and how he plans on creating alliances about some of this pregame stuff. Tyson is my winner pick. He is the person, in my opinion, who has the best shot of winning over everyone else. Because if there is a big threat alliance, he will be the lowest threat level in that big threat alliance, which is a, the perfect position to be in. And I see him getting very far in this game, if not to the end. And if he does get voted out, he has one of the strongest chances at coming back in the Edge of Extinction battle. Next on our list, we have Danny Boatwright. Danny's first and only season so far was season 11, Guatemala. And in that season, she got to the merge, won two individual immunities, and only had one vote against her the entire season. She won in a 6-1 to one vote, but honestly, I don't see Danny winning this season, solely because I don't think she is one of the hardest players in this cast. And a player that will go full force throughout the season. And also for Danny, um, she was Jeff Probst's winner pick in one of his interviews. But honestly, she doesn't have... And it's because she had that fire in her at the start of the game and at the marooning. But I don't see her winning or getting any jury respect. I feel like she might be dragged to the end as a go or taken out right before the final tribal council. Alright, so next up we have Sophie Clark. Sophie played in South Pacific, which was the 23rd season of Survivor. And two veterans came back to play, being Coach and Ozzy, who were both very good players. Um, this season, Redemption Island was in play as well, but Sophie never got voted out, so she never had to go to Redemption. She was seen as an annoying and bratty person to some people, which isn't a great thing and might hurt her game in this upcoming season. But she was strong in challenges, winning three individual immunities. She got plenty of votes throughout the season, but she took 
coach and Albert to the end and beat them. So that's good for her, but honestly, I don't think she'll make it too far. Honestly, I see her as being a pre-merge boot. I don't see her winning the game. I feel like she wouldn't represent the season well, to be honest. So, yeah. We have Jeremy Collins. Jeremy played two seasons, San Juan del Sur and Second Chances. He uses meat shields in these type of games, so he'd probably keep around people like Tony, Sandra, and Boston Rob. In Cambodia, he played an amazing game while playing an idol successfully on him that that helped make the Zero Vote Tribal Council, which is one of the most iconic tribal councils of all time. And in the end, he won that season unanimously against Spencer and Tasha, two people who also played really good games that season. He'll be seen as a threat probably because of his ET can because of people's ET Canada interviews where they stated that he would probably be one of the more threatening people in the cast. And also, I just feel like he does have a strong chance at winning as long as he keeps his threat level down enough so that people won't initially go for him. So I think Jeremy has a shot as long as he maintains his game and keeps his game under control. Next up, we have Sandra Diaz Twine. Sandra is a, the only two time winner of the series. She played Pearl Islands, which she won, and Heroes vs. Villains, which she won. And then she played another season, Game Changers, which she was pre jury, but it was her strongest season. Uh, everyone knows how she plays by now. Um, she's been playing since very early on. She has the anyone but me mentality, which is very good mentality to have. Because as long as you're not gone, you still have a shot at the money. And she is probably the biggest threat in the game. Maybe behind Boston Rob. Uh, the only see way I see her making merge is if the big threats align. And if this happens, she'll be probably an early merge boot. She has no shot at winning. And if she gets to the end, she'll win. But no one's going to let her get that far just because of her huge threat level and her uh, past season gameplay. So next up, we have Ben Trybergen. Uh He played in Heroes vs. Healers vs. Hustlers. And he was in the minority after a tri tribe swap, but his tribe kept winning challenges. And then when Merge came, he was the swing vote for the first vote. But he ended up becoming a controlling person, which turned his allies against him. And he had three, so he had to play three idols to keep him safe. And he got all the way to the final tribal council and beat the other two people in a five to two to one vote. He isn't really a well-respected winner, but I do think he deserved the win. And I think that he doesn't really have a good chance at winning this next upcoming season, season 40. But he can probably pull something that he did in Heroes vs. Healers vs. Hustlers. And he could make it to the end which I don't see likely, but I don't think he'll win. In this part, we have Michelle Fitzgerald. Michelle won Survivor Korong, which was of the Brain vs. Brawn vs. Beauty format, and she was on the Beauty Tribe. She wasn't the most strategic, physical, or social of the finalists, but she, she did end up winning the game. She won the final immunity and also got to take away someone's jury vote, and she chose Neil, and she only received two votes the entire season, except in the final tribal council where she received the win with a vote of five to two to zero. I don't see Michelle winning, even though I've heard a lot of people think she will, but personally, I just don't see it. All right, so that is it for this 
part of my cast assessment for Survivor Winners at War. Um, turn on notifications for my channel to get notified when part 2 comes out. And yeah, like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.